The first Need for Speed game to come out on the GBA was Underground, which was released in December of 2003, about a month after the main game's release. I gotta say, I wasn't expecting a lot from this, like, just look at this framey mess. I was having Vietnam flashbacks to Medal of Honor Underground, or World War II flashbacks rather, because this is really ugly. It's impressive, sort of, but it's super ugly. The thing is, this came out a year after Velez and Jubail's V Rally 3, which clearly looks far, far better, though I guess comparing anything to VD Dev is kind of unfair, so instead Instead, let's compare it to Top Gear Rally, which came out earlier and also looks far, far better. 3D on the GBA is always kind of cool, and some reviewers at the time seemed to be impressed by these graphics, but I don't think this was exactly all that groundbreaking. It doesn't help that all the very few tracks look the same, and it's meant to be set at night, but it's far too bright. I'm assuming this is because of the original GBA's lack of backlighting. But despite the worst first impression ever, you might not believe me, but Underground is actually genuinely seriously really fun and playable. I mean, the car handling might just be the best I've ever experienced on the GBA for a 3D racer. Normally cars slide around awkwardly in these kind of games and they feel like they're floating above the road, but here they're really weighty and the handbrake drift is so, so good and you can drift around corners and boost out to regain speed and the crashes generally make physical sense. It's all just surprisingly really tight and really fun. The thing Thing is, most of the time I properly screwed up while racing was because I couldn't tell what I was even looking at. They're really taking gameplay before graphics to another level here. And the campaign surrounding the gameplay holds up super well too. They've tried to bring over all the customization stuff here with real licensed cars and it's super in-depth and satisfying to play with. I bought an Impreza to start with and as I earned money and unlocked parts going through the campaign I slowly riced it up and genuinely enjoyed doing so. You spend the game going up ranks by challenging races above you and as simple as that is, there is some thought put into it. Sometimes the races below you on the ranking can challenge you, and if you lose it you actually do drop a rank, so there's a good consequence and sort of intensity to each race. There's also drag and drift racing, and they're okay-ish. Drag was simple enough with a similar gear switching thing going on to the main game, and I don't feel like the drifting mode works super well here, but I didn't spend a lot of time with it. I did spend way more time on the campaign than I thought I would though. I kept thinking I should stop, but I just kept wanting to do one more race and move up those rankings. Need for Speed Underground GBA is a weirdly good game, which I really like because the main version of Underground is probably my favourite Need for Speed game ever made. Really the only thing letting this down is the graphics. If this had V-Rally's graphics then it'd easily be one of my favourite GBA games. It made me really genuinely excited to go on with the rest of these. Also they did that thing where they tried to put real songs on the GBA and yes, Lil John and the East Side Boys are here. Because it's so dodgy, I'm not even worried about getting content ID'd on that one though. Now that I've said it, I definitely will. So all these games were developed by a small studio named Pocketeers, who there isn't a lot of information on, but they were well known for their impressive GBA 3D engine. The following Need for Speed GBA game, Porsche Unleashed, started development before development started on Need for Speed Underground on the GBA despite releasing afterwards. As such, and because this is a very different style of game being a Porsche game, it feels considerably different to Underground. It's based on the PS1 game from early 2000, but this randomly came out four years later in early 2004, and it's the only game on this list to not be published by EA. Instead it's been published by Destination Software. I think it's fair to say this went through its own little version of a development hell in some way. And I think I've found the cure for insomnia. The driving here is again pretty weighty which is respectable but it feels way more loose and out of control. There's no boosting or handbrake turns or car customization beyond colour and the campaign is just so linear and dull and it's just race after race which are too straight and go on too long. What's most egregious is the collisions, you kind of just bounce off walls and it puts you back into place on your merry way and you barely lose any speed so there's barely any reason to even bother turning on these long straight tracks so you kind of just sit in these really dull long levels waiting for it all to blow over. On the plus side it's a lot visually smoother than underground and the levels are more varied. There's a cockpit view in place of a bumper view which while in use keeps the frame rate slightly smoother which is nice but it's still pretty hard to see what's coming up which you know is fairly important in a racing game. Thankfully Pocketeers released an actual follow-up to underground later that year and would release the remaining Need for Speed games on time. 
Unlike the main version of Underground 2, this version is more like the first game in that there's no open world and it's just linear circuit drag and drift modes, as well as a collection of fairly out of place mini games that are an okay distraction. The frame rate and visuals are much improved over Underground and you can even tell the difference between levels here which is a plus yet still on occasion I still found it unclear where I was meant to go. The driving itself is a little worse though I think. The cars here lose traction way easier so they feel less weighty and they can fishtail in a sort of un natural way. This does help with the drifting events a lot more since it's easier to just slide around constantly, but in races you feel like you have less control and not in a good way. As I said, it's very slight and the frame rate improvements make this more playable than Underground anyway, but I don't think it feels quite as good. Maybe it's just a personal preference thing, but I don't know, it's, it's, it feels off. What I do think is significantly worse is the campaign mode. Instead of that pretty cool rankings thing that Underground was doing, this just gives you a bunch of lists like checklists of challenges to do one by one, and often challenges drag out too long and get boring. Thankfully the car upgrade thing is still here and you still slowly unlock upgrades and cars to buy but the campaign just feels completely uninspired coming off the back of the first game so this didn't hold my attention for nearly as long. Also they've gone for the super generic kind of midi style rock beats in place of fuzzy songs which is also pretty boring. For now my brand new 240SX will be neglected. Most Wanted came out in 2005 alongside all the other versions and it's worth noting at this point that we were past the PSP and DS's releases, and this came out on both the PSP and the DS. Like comparing this game's graphics to something like the PSP's Ridge Racer which came out earlier sort of puts it in its place. Tech was advancing so quickly at the time. This naturally feels a lot like Underground 2, like again they haven't made an open world or anything but there are some good and bad changes here. They've removed the drifting and drag events which I think is a good thing because I never thought they were that good, making most of the events more focused on traditional racing like with sprints, eliminations, and just old school circuit races. My absolute favourite thing about this one, and this is something that it does far better than any other game on this list, is the campaign. It's grouped into chapters where you need to do races in the chapters to earn money to beef up and buy cars and also earn respect which you need to be able to challenge the ranked races on the blacklist. The whole loop of moving up the list and beefing up your car is still super addictive and this feels like the sequel that Underground GBA called for. For. Most Wanted also introduced a much needed mini map which helps a lot with upcoming corners. All that said, this game still has some substantial issues. The most baffling of all of them is that they removed nitrous so you can't boost which just needlessly takes away depth from the excitement of the racing and it really sucks. It was always fun boosting out of a drift in the underground games. On top of this for some reason, the levels are really boring because there's just so many long straight stretches of nothing. I think these levels are what drag this game down the most. If this had Underground's physics, levels from the second game, and NOS, it would be a phenomenal GBA racer. Still, I enjoyed racing around in my sleeper IS300. Need for Speed Carbon Own the City was 2006's handheld Need for Speed game, and they brought back NOS and tighter levels which is awesome, but this game is otherwise a bit bad, like it's just ultra weird and ends up missing the mark entirely. So as you may have already noticed, the levels keep phasing between these colours as if these games weren't nauseating enough already. Uh, interestingly the campaign has a bit more of a story than usual. It's told through these stills and you have amnesia from a crash which killed your brother and you spend the game regaining territory to try and figure out what happened. It's not really told very well and this whole Own the City spin-off game is also on the PSP and DS and I can't confirm it, but I imagine that the story's probably told a little bit better on those systems. Essentially the game devolves into just a big checklist though which I don't think is particularly interesting, but it still has all the same car upgrade stuff which is still fantastic. The thing that really gets me about this game is that they tried to implement the wingman system from Carbon but it is so broken. So if you don't know the idea, you're allowed to press a button to get a driver to help you out in some way, whether that be like crashing into other opponents or driving in front of you for slip screen or, or, or any other way, but here it's essentially a system where you press a button to get a car to come and just crash into you. Like the AI is so bad, it's hilarious. I kept thinking like, I'll stay out of the way and this time my wingman will help me, but most of the time they either didn't help me at all or they actively came and crashed into me and screwed me up. It's the most masochistic game mechanic I've ever seen. So compared to the others, Carbon has a dull campaign, physics which aren't as good as Underground's, a weird colour thing that makes you feel sick, and a button which makes you crash. It ain't great, and it ain't a great way to end the respectable run of GBA Need for Speed games. And with that, we've covered 
every single Need for Speed GBA game. And now it's time to rank them from worst to best. Worst is Porsche Unleashed, obviously. You know, it lacks features of all the others. The driving's way worse than all the others. It's just not a good game. Uh, number four, I'm gonna put Need for Speed, Carbon, Own the City, which I think isn't a bad game, but just tries to bite off more than it can chew, like the wingman system's really weird. Something I neglected to mention in the main part of this video was uh, Need for Speed, Own the City actually has really varied levels. Um, as you go through, you kind of unlock all the districts and, and the levels start changing up quite a lot, which I think is really interesting, but still I wouldn't put it above any of the games above it on this list because it's just too strange. Like the wingman system is so strange it, it, and you know, the campaign is still quite linear. Number three is Need for Speed Underground 2, which is also a good game, but I think the campaign is just so dull. Like it's literally categories like circuit, sprint, drag, drift, and then just lists. And it's literally like a tick comes up when you beat each race. It is so like uninspired and uninteresting, but otherwise pretty good game. Above that, I'm gonna put Need for Speed Most Wanted, which has such a good campaign. And I really wanna put it as one, but like, why is there no nitrous in it? Like, why can't you boost? I don't understand. Like every other game except Porsche Unleashed, you could boost, but like, like, the main version has NOS, I don't get it, I, I don't know why they took that out, but um, it actually brings the game down quite a lot, because like, a lot of the enjoyment is cornering and then boosting out of the corner, and sort of trying to figure out how to master that, and then also it doesn't have that many corners in each race, like, kind of just has those gradual turns, or just really long straights, which, are, which is really lame, I think. Yeah, and then number one is the ugliest of them all, the first one I played, Need for Speed Underground, the first one that came out, they kind of, I'd say they hit a home run, but like, the graphics pull it down quite a bit, um, but like the handling is really good in it, like far better than every other game on this list. It just feels so good and weighty and everything kind of reacts how it should. And um, you know, the campaign's really interesting with the ranking system and people challenging you from below. It's just, it's just such a good game. And I, I think even though it looks really ugly, if you do want to try one of these out of curiosity, that's probably, that's probably the one to pick. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you disagree with my rankings, go and ramble about it in the comments as usual. And um, yeah, so recently, recently I hit 40,000 subscribers, which is super crazy. Um, my avatar vid did far better than I thought it would. I was expecting like 5K views, 10K views. Like I put a lot of effort into it obviously, but it was very much like a, a one for me kind of vid. Um, but it just blew up and I am so thankful and if you're new here, welcome. If you're old here, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm so just thank. It's so surreal, man. Like, this is this weird hobby where I talk about children's games. Oh, maybe not. Ch That's unfair. But you know, I talk about quite esoteric things that I like. That I'm surprised anyone else likes. Like, forty thousand of you like it. Forty-two thousand now of you like it, and that's just crazy. And I'm really thankful and. You know, it's it's just out of this world. And you know, the end of the year's coming up. I'm gonna go into the new year with all this nice sort of optimism about my channel. And it'll be interesting to see where I'm at in another year's time, you know. Um, yeah, I'm feeling good about it and I'm, I'm really thankful. Yeah, so on that note, on that sort of I'm good note, I'm feeling good. Just, let's let's end the video. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for subscribing, all that stuff. Um, take it easy.